Let's talk a little bit about presets in Camtasia 2020. The thing I like about presets is that perhaps you're like me and you find yourself constantly adjusting assets in Camtasia. Things like annotations. You know, you drop them on the timeline and it's never the font I want or the color. So you got to go in and change all of that stuff, right? Same thing with visual effects, and I'll show you a couple of demos of that. And, of course, behaviors. We'll talk about the kind of issues and stuff like that with behaviors. But the nice thing about it is any of these things are certainly very customizable inside of Camtasia. But if you find yourself constantly making adjustments and things, it can be kind of a pain if you do that every time you want to use one. You know, every time you want to use a certain annotation or visual effect or a behavior. So, in essence, presets are time savers. And I like them. I like them a lot. So, let's uh, kind of take a look at a little bit of what that means. Let's jump over to Camtasia. And here on the timeline, I just have a couple of assets to start with. The first one here is an annotation, of course. So go into annotations, find one that you like, add it to the timeline, and on this one, basically, all I've done is made some of those adjustments and modifications that I was just talking about. I changed the font from Montserrat to Montserrat Bold. I changed the color to this green, and I also added an outline with a little bit of a stroke. So this is kind of something that I want to reuse a lot, but I never again want to have to go in and change the color, add the stroke, change the font. Now, once I get done configuring this thing the way I want, certainly in the previous versions of Camtasia, I can right click on it and I can add it to my library, right? And then it'll be a custom asset that I can drop on the timeline anytime I want from my library. Okay, and we've done this before, but now in this version of Camtasia, after I make these changes, what you can do is over here under your properties, and it can be on any of the property tabs. Here's the visual properties for the asset Here's the call out or properties for the annotation. So any of these things I can find this little plus button. So I'm going to go ahead and add preset. And what that does is on my annotations tab, you notice that you usually have these abstract, basic, bold, urban, you know, and all. But now you have one called user. Okay. And I know that it's been customized because it has this little person icon thingy here. Okay, so now anytime I want to use this particularly configured callout, all I have to do is on the annotations under user, drop it on the timeline. Okay, and then I'm kind of good to go. All right, so that's one way you can use them for annotations. And like I say, You'll notice I don't have a lot in my user annotations, quite frankly, because if I go to the exercise of configuring it all this way, I will probably be adding it to my library and reusing it that way. Now, the other caveat here is that for annotations, let's do this. Let's add us, right click and add us a visual effect. Let's add a drop shadow. Okay, and I'm going to actually even make this a little more dramatic. Let's punch it out, make it kind of bold. And I'm also going to delete this out of my presets. So adding visual effects to an annotation, let's add it as a preset. Ah, there it is. But if I drop it on the timeline, you'll notice I don't have my drop shadow. So that's a limitation for annotations. And again, one of the reasons why I just add them to my library. All right, but much more useful to me are some of the other 
things that presets can be used for. So let me give you a couple of quick examples here. Here we have our favorite subject, Maggie, the Wonder Dog, because she's awesome, right? Let's add a visual effect to her. And normally I right click and add visual effects this way. But for this example, I think what I'll do is let's go to our tab here, visual effects, and let's add us a color adjustment. Okay, boom. And this is a trick that I've showed you all before, <laughs> the hideous defaults for color adjustment. The trick is if you change these to zero, brightness to zero, contrast to zero, what you end up with is grayscale, right? That's kind of handy dandy and useful, but what I can do now is for the effect, for the visual effect, you can also create presets from those. So again, notice now, oh, here's my effect in the properties. I have a little plus button. Let's add the preset. And for these kinds of presets, you can actually give them a name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this grayscale. I'm going to say OK. And now what you see is that in my visual effects panel, I now have a customized effect. Okay, so let's do this. Let's just take it off of Maggie down here. And again, I know it's customized because it has the little person right in here, kind of hard to see. But the punchline is I can now, boom, add me a grayscale anytime I want. And I can set, you know, any other parameters and stuff like that. As much customization as you want to do with any specific effect, you can pre-configure it and then add it right into your hopper here, so to speak. Okay, and if you don't like it, you right click on it and delete it. And the other handy thing that happens with presets is another feature in Camtasia 2020 is favorites. So I actually like to be able to really quickly and easily make something grayscale. You can be very dramatic, you know, and you can do all kinds of fun tricks with it. So one thing I might want to do then is click the star to also add this customized preset to my favorites. So now when I go to favorites, boom, I have it right here as well. I like that. I like it a lot. Let's take a look at one other example. This is a little bit of a hack, I guess. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to create a typing text behavior. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to modify a behavior. And it's going to have the effect of typing text. So let's do that. It's kind of like two hacks, two topics in one. It's not only modifying a behavior, but also saving it as a preset and then being able to apply it anytime we want. Here on the timeline, I just have some text. Okay, this is just a regular old text box. And we're going to create an effect where the text will type. And to do that, we're going to use a behavior. If you haven't seen this trick, it's kind of fun. It's kind of sweet. So here I have the plain text. Let's go to my behaviors. And the secret sauce to this is I'm going to use a reveal behavior. So let's drag that and drop it on the asset. Okay, and by default, here's where it kind of comes into play. Behaviors, of course, have all kinds of parameters, uh, stuff you can configure and change. And there's an in animation, there's during, there is out, you know, and all this stuff that you can do. All right, well, let's kind of rack this up a little bit. So I'm going to, first of all, for the text, I uh, want it to come in text, first to last, or left to right actually works also. And I'm going to set the movement to linear or smooth. Both of those work pretty well. Direction from the left, because that's the way typing happens, right? And right out of the box, the reveal, let's just preview it. That's the way it behaves. Not very typing-like. Oh, and by the way, 
after it comes in on the during it's going to do this really funky you know flashing and stuff like that and then it's also going to go out all right so really none of that is what I want to have happen so I'm going to make these changes and the secret sauce for making it look like typing is on the in behavior I want to take the speed up to a hundred percent right and if you do that it's going to type but it's going to type really fast I'll play this I don't know if you'll even be able to see it on the webinar Okay, so that's really, really fast. You can kind of make it a little more typing-like by changing the offset. I generally will go for like a 0.1 second offset, and that's going to kind of slow it down. Okay, and then for the demo on the webinar here, I'll just show you, let's do a 0.2 offset. And that's going to slow it down even more. All right. I am also going to get rid of this during animation. So let's set that to none. And let's set out to none also. I'll show you why in just a second. So there's a little caveat here, <laughs> of course. All right. So what do we got here? Now, basically, I have configured this to be typing text haven't I nice typing text so of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the plus button and I'm going to say typing text I'm going to say OK and now I have a behavior preset called typing text and of course I can apply that to any text that I want to add that behavior to uh, here's caveat though. Let me just kind of explain this. Let's see. Our call out here is the default five seconds. Another way to actually slow down the typing is, can anybody guess? Anybody guess? If I stretch this out to be longer, the in animation will slow down just by nature of the way behaviors work. A behavior works for a certain amount of time during in and then you have the during period and then you have the exit period. Okay, So elongating it uh, will make the thing go slower. Well, what if I don't want it to go slower but I want this text to stay on screen? Let's drag this back down to 5 and I'm, I'm gonna play it just to demo this. Right Here we go. Boom, and it goes away. So typing text <laughs> is nice. And you know, if I want that speed, let's jack this back up again to point 0.1. All right, so now it's nice and quick and snappy. Great effect. And boom, it goes away. The way you get around that is basically you can't just make it last longer because why? As we just saw, what that's going to do is slow down the beginning animation of the typing effect. So what you got to do is you got to right click, copy, after you've, you know, configured your text, right, and then paste it at the end, and then ditch the behavior. Boom. So now it's going to come in, it's going to type. It's going to do its thing, and it will now stay in a static state as long as I want. Okay, so that's uh, kind of the purpose and the the point there. Uh, I like creating those kinds of presets because they're handy dandy. Again, you can add them as favorites. Another thing, let's do one more real quick on the behavior aspect. So some of the behaviors like pulsing. Let's drop this on here. So pulsing again during will do this very obnoxious pulsating thing. Some behaviors, I literally never want this to happen, ever. 
So what I can do is I can take this off, set it to none, okay? If I want to pulse during, sure, then I'll go in and put a pulse eight. But by default, I, that's hardly ever the case. The default is this stupid thing is gonna pulsate. I gotta go in and turn it off. Well, the other thing you can do with presets is let's go ahead and add this as a preset. Notice it has the same name as this. If I say OK, I can actually then go in and delete this one. So now my pulsing behavior by default doesn't do that obnoxious pulsing in the middle. So you can reconfigure your defaults. And by the way, if you want to get your defaults back, you just right click and say restore all defaults. There you go. Any questions on that? And one thing about presets is you can't export them individually from the behaviors bin here. Like there is no right click or export, but you can create a package export. If you create a package, you can take your tools, but you can export them as a package and share them with others. Okay. Well, that's about all I had for tonight, folks. Any questions before we call it an evening? Uh, was that fun and useful? Everybody have a good time? Okay. If there are no other questions, I'll let everybody go, and we'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for coming.